listen to this. They are starting to Ninja Nate chant. We're battling out on these Ninja Warrior style obstacle courses every day. It began to be projected that I'd make it to the finals. I have this accident, hitting my head on the bottom of the ocean floor. My neck snapped forward, knocked me unconscious. And as I kind of wake up, I can't move. I think I'm paralyzed. I went to college to get a mechanical engineering degree. I saw that I could get an engineering job where I could come out of college making really good money and that'll set the trajectory for my life. It was purely financial, future freedom. It wasn't so much around purpose. Move to Houston, Texas, start this high capacity, high income job, doing well financially, doing well in friendships. I was still had this desire to be an athlete and I was still training. I didn't know what I was training for, but I'd still go to the gym. I was still playing a lot of active sports. And a friend sent me a text message and he said, hey, have you heard of this thing called American Ninja Warrior? And as I watched this thing happen, it, it ignited something in my spirit where I was like, whoa, I've never heard of this show before. I've never wanted to be on TV. I don't want to be in front of people, but I love competition and something sparked in my spirit that I knew was from God. I had announced to a lot of my friends that I'm going for this thing and I got a lot of people behind me Got a phone call from the producers. Hey, thanks for applying. Better luck next year. And boom, I was like, but, but, uh, but my friend said I, I would be, I would be good enough. I'd get on. And they just said, hey, apply again next year. So I apply again next year. Same thing happened. Got rejected. And they said, Nate, Ninja Warrior is is also a reality TV show. So you need to bring more of your personality and especially your story of what you do in your life. And up to that point, I'd never shared about some of the mission trips that I was on, drilling water wells in Latin America, working in orphanages in Africa. And so I shared some of that story on my audition video and the producer called me pretty quickly and was like, hey, we saw your video, this is awesome. Why haven't you shared this stuff before? Beginning to go down that process is what, one, got me accepted on the show. And then two, I saw that God was beginning to use and shape part of my life to begin telling stories to begin bringing people along the journey and the adventure that I was experiencing. <laughs> the night before the finals, trying to kind of test a few things and warm up, freak accident happens and I end up snapping my ankle, tearing a ligament. So it's like the rug just gets pulled out from under me, right in the middle of like this big triumphant breakthrough. And I'm laying back in my hotel room that night and just crying my eyes out like, God, how could this happen? This, this is so frustrating, it's not fair. And, and I felt a very clear, sense in my spirit, Romans 8, 28, where God says he works all things together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. I wrapped it up, taped it up, put a big brace on, and I tried to still run this Ninja Warrior course and I obviously failed the first obstacle. And I tried for the fourth year and missed making it back to the national finals on Ninja Warrior by one spot. Year five, same thing happened. I'm, I'm starting to wrestle with like, maybe this isn't the path for me. I've given this five years of my life. I apply again that sixth year. All right, God, I don't know what it's going to look like, but I'm really feeling like it's also time for me to walk away from this, this job. And so I tell my engineering manager at the time, and he was shocked, like, what? Why would you leave a high six-figure salary? You've got first-class flights around the world. You're working on incredible projects. People would kill to have the job you have. And I'm like, yeah, I, I get that. But I just felt in my spirit for a while that it's time for me to step out in faith. I basically hand in my resignation letter and then get accepted to Ninja Warrior for the sixth season get on, do well in the regionals, and make it to the national finals. Came here ready. Nice. Is up out here. He is As we taken a break from the first night into the second night, I go back to sleep in the hotel during the day for a little bit, wake up, food poisoning. Massively sick for the next 12 hours, and I got a call from the producer, and he's like, hey, if you're not down here in the next 45 minutes, we have to eliminate you from the competition. I've made it this far, I've gotten to the national finals, I've beaten the first round, and this is how it's gonna end for me. I was like, you know what? I am gonna give it everything I've got. They carried me down in a car, brought me to the competition, stuck an IV in me, and then they put me on the course. At that point, I could barely stand up, but I was like, God, I'm here to, to illuminate that there's no situation that you can't overcome, and I just had this rejuvenation. He's really digging deep to get through these, but you can see the food poisoning has sapped his strength. Obstacle by obstacle, I somehow make it through. I can see the end in sight. So not much time left for these final two obstacles. How is he doing this? Jump out of the water, I just smash this buzzer. 
I see the smoke psh, begins pouring up from the side. Miraculously, I'd beaten this thing. He's our first finisher of the night, and he did it with less than two seconds. It was just overwhelming feeling of, you know, excitement and joy, and then exhaustion. And I collapsed on the platform soon after, kind of kneeling down and pointing to the sky and just saying, thank you, Jesus. About 30 minutes later, they say, Nate, now you have to go into the final round. And I climb up on that stage and pretty much immediately fail. It was a massive breakthrough. It was a God story. It was a powerful time. I'd become one of the elite, but then I crash and burn. I've already quit my job and career. I don't know what's before me. I'm like, God, just like that Romans 828 promise that you gave me three years before, you're gonna work all things together. I get this random phone call and it's basically an agent saying, hey, we saw your run on American Ninja Warrior. We think you'd be a good fit for our TV show, Igs at the Lawn. It's basically Ninja Warrior meets Survivor in Spanish. And we're gonna send a production camera crew to your house right now, film a little bit of background stuff, and then you're gonna to fly to the Dominican Republic. And we're battling out on these Ninja Warrior style obstacle courses every day. And then at night, it's reality TV Survivor, completely isolated from the outside world, just living basically in a shack you know, there's excitement in this competition. It's new and it's novel, but I'm the outsider. I don't speak Spanish, but I started to settle in and find a rhythm. And I began to, to share to the audience and to my teammates and opponents what God was saying and, and doing in my life. Month three rolls along, month four, month five, and I'm still at the top of the competition. And they tell us we're probably gonna have seven months of doing this. And then out of nowhere, I have this accident where I have my neck snap forward knock me unconscious for a few seconds. And as I kind of wake up, I can't move. And I see my opponent trying to help grab and stabilize me and keep my head above water. It was a scary like paralyzation moment. And I get put on the stretcher and basically sent off to this little field hospital in the Dominican. That night, I'm laying here with this neck brace on, kind of crying to myself. And I hear this song begin to play. It was called Waymaker. It was a worship song that I'd memorized before I went on the show. I'm like, what, where's that coming from? There's a guard on his cell phone playing this, this worship song. And I just begin weeping as I, I felt God just say, hey, even when you can't see it and when you don't feel it, I'm still working and I'm still making a way so you don't give up. After a month, I get back in the competition come back in, somehow start winning at a high level, win a new SUV at the last day of the regular season, move into the finals week and begin knocking out and eliminating all the other competitors. And by the end of it, I found myself being the last man standing, the last competitor, and now being handed a big trophy and crowned the grand champion. Nate Burkhalter, campeón de Exatron Estados Unidos. Everyone there, my teammates and my competitors in the audience all said, the way that you won, God showed up in those stories time after time. And we made fun of you, but now we see that God truly was with you. And now this is a God story. So as I get out of this competition, I call my old manager from my former company. And he's like, you're never gonna believe what happened. If you hadn't quit your job, I would have had to let you go. So you would have lost your job had you stayed here. I was like, wow. Well, you know what happened on my side? I ended up being on the show for seven months. I won two new SUVs, a bunch of other prizes. Ultimately walked away as the grand champion with a $200,000 prize. And if I had played it safe, it would have been the riskiest move I could have made. It reminds me of even a parable Jesus talked about when he said, for those who are willing to lose their life for my sake, they'll find true life. But for those that try to live their life on their terms and control it and won't give it up, ultimately they're gonna lose it. That's the option that lays before us. Which one do you wanna choose? I think living to the fullest means living without limits. Limitations in finances, in family, in health. And the more I, I tap into where God's calling me and guiding me and preparing me, the more I tap into that purpose and it activates me. You can live on mission with a purpose for eternal significance. For anyone that feels uncertain or stuck in their life, if you really begin to say, God, I, I wanna be all in, that can be the place of activation, knowing that Matthew 6.33 says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and his way of doing things. Continue to ask God for guidance and direction. 
He'll put people in your life. Your life is meant to have an impact. And I still believe there's no limit to what God can and will do through a life that's fully submitted to him. Hey, this is Nate Burkhalter and you're watching This Is Me TV. Pull the, pull the, thank you for watching, sharing, ringing that bell and dropping a comment below. We love creating these inspirational face stories for you and thousands of others. Now, all the stories on this channel are brought to you in partnership with Impactus and are donor funded, which means people have given so that you can be encouraged in your faith. Yeah, people care that much about you. And today, we'd like to invite you to be a part of this mission with us. This Is Me TV exists to encourage and empower the online generation to live unashamed for God and use their God-given gifts to influence culture. We do this by creating stories like the one you've just watched. And to date, we've had over 1.8 million viewers watched and be encouraged in their faith right here. It's mind-blowing to see how God has and will continue to use This Is Me TV. So would you be willing to join us today and help us equip this generation for a life of purpose and godly impact? The link's below or head on over to impactus.org. Much love from us all and thank you so much for considering this partnership.